Welcome to Tuesdays in the Chapel here in the historic Whiteman Chapel on the campus of the Scarrett Bennett Center in Nashville, Tennessee. We are pleased you can be with us today however you can be, in person or virtually. I'd like to introduce our speaker for today. Reverend Madeline Reboucher is from Shreveport, Louisiana. She grew up in the Episcopal Church. She has a BA in religion and writing from Texas Christian University. Then she moved to Colorado where she lived and worked in an intentional living community with incarcerated teenagers. During those years, she began to discern a call to full-time ministry. Madeline then graduated with her Master's in Divinity from Duke Divinity School in 2019, where she worked as a chaplain in a women's prison, studied theology and the arts, and began the discernment, pro excuse me, discernment process for ordination to the priesthood of the Diocese of Western Louisiana. Following her MDiv, she completed a chaplain residency through the Clinical Pastoral Education Department at Duke University Hospital. There, while she was there, she served as the chaplain to the neonatal and pediatric floors, specializing in pediatric palliative care. She then moved to Nashville in 2020 to continue her theological studies in the Theology Master's Program at Vanderbilt Divinity School. She was ordained to the priesthood on January 30th, 2021, and was hired as the curate, the curate at Christ Church Cathedral in Nashville. You can keep your eye out for Madeline scooting around town on her red moped. She lives in Sylvan Park with some beloved friends and her best pal, Olive, the Yellow Lab. Please hear this call to worship. Gather us in, O oh God, we who are a grand spectrum of your children, prisms that catch your light with furtive wanting and give it back in a variety of blended hues. Gather us in, O oh God, as dancing colors of a rainbow in the sky, for our very being is the fulfillment of your promise as you shine through us. Let us pray. God, you created us to contain a tableau of possibilities, given us countless opportunities to encounter your indwelling gift of radiance a glimmer of hope in depression, a ray of courage amid life's trials, a sparkle of joy at the end of illness, a flash of valuable intuition, a beam of illuminating perception, a glow of pleasure and contentment, a radiance only the stilled soul perceives. Your love is boundless. Thank you. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 11. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it in a cellar, but on the lampstand, so that those who enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if it is not healthy, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, consider whether the light in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, with no part of it in darkness, it will be as full of light as when a lamp gives you light with its rays. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good afternoon, saints, and thank you so much for having me here at Scarrett Bennett. It's a pleasure to be back here with all of you. As um, I was introduced, I am here through Christ Church Cathedral, and it's a pleasure to be here and getting to be with you this afternoon. There are a couple things that might be helpful for you to know if you aren't familiar with the traditions of the Episcopal Church. One of them is my title, Curate, (laughs) which is, um, it's it's a confusing one. That just means a a priest in training, an entry-level position for a priest. Another thing that might be helpful is that we're very loyal to the revised common lectionary but we also have particular celebrations within that lectionary. We call these feast feast days in keeping with the Judeo-Christian traditions of feasting and fasting. There are major feasts and minor feasts. Today is a minor feast in honor of Irenaeus of Lyon. Does Does that name sound familiar to anyone, Irenaeus? Does anybody remember that? No? That's okay. (laughs) I figured not so much. It probably wouldn't if you haven't done a lot of um, academic religious studying. But bear with me if you're already bored to tears. It's going to pick up here in a second. I do promise that. (laughs) Irenaeus was a second century bishop of the early church and was one of the most influential figures in our faith tradition. He's definitely most well known for his writings called Against Heresies, in which he was writing, you guessed it, against heresies. His primary focus was to dispel the influence of a growing religious sect known as the Gnostics. Does that sound familiar to anyone, the Gnostics? Okay, we, yeah, we know them. They weren't, they weren't, it wasn't great. Among other things, the Gnostics believed that the material world was inherently evil and that true freedom was escaping the fallenness of creation through the pursuit of knowledge and a higher state of being. The Gnostics, in other words, pitted spirit and knowledge fundamentally against flesh and material. But Irenaeus was a bishop who was very familiar with Jesus and with the apostles' teachings. And so he argued against the Gnostics to say, that true freedom is the knowledge of Christ, who redeems rather than escapes bodily material existence. I'll say that again. He argues that true freedom is the knowledge of Christ, who redeems rather than escapes bodily and material existence. Today, as my tradition remembers and celebrates the life and ministry of St. Irenaeus, I'm once again struck at how fundamental the body is to our faith as Christians. It's perhaps the most central piece that sets us apart from any other religious tradition. Saint Irenaeus understood this and could not stand even the very idea of the body coming under attack. He could not stand by and let Gnostics call these bodies evil because he knew who Jesus was and he knew what Jesus said. He understood that in God's greatest revelation, God came to us in a body. God had come before in clouds and in bushes. He sent messages through angels and plagues. But God's greatest and most world-altering act was to be born as a human. Jesus came to be with us and to share this human experience. Jesus came in a body. Jesus spat up as a baby as surely as he had allergies as an adult. God knows that we experience nothing. Think nothing, do nothing in this world outside of these bodies. So yes, bodies are central to our faith. Which is why it's no surprise to me that the scripture for Irenaeus' feast day is this passage we've read from Luke. 
Your eye is the lamp of your body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if it's not healthy, your body is full of darkness. And of course, this was written long before humans knew anything about the way eyes really work. The eyes are all about light. Light is the primary information the eye receives. And I did have to look this up, so I'll admit that, but I've got some details for you. When light hits the retina of the eye, special cells turn that light into electrical signals, which travel through the optic nerve to the brain, allowing us to process the images we've seen. But it's all about light. The way that we're able to understand any information through sight is through our eyes and through the light. And here, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus was telling us about how our eyes work. Your eye is the lamp of your body. And of course, we know that the saints living with blindness process information through the other senses of touch, taste, smell, and hearing, which are just as powerful. Jesus is not suggesting that the eye is the most important part of the body, but rather to say that our bodies contain our light and contain our darkness. If then your whole body is full of light with no part of darkness in it, it will be as full of light as when a lamp gives you light with its rays. That's what St. Luke says. Our light and our love our pain and our grief live in our bodies. And more often than not, our bodies know what's going on long before we've consciously become aware of it. Is anyone else's body completely exhausted right now? Is your body telling you to slow down? Are you getting sick? Are you getting achy? Are you having trouble sleeping? Does your body feel weighed down by this present darkness? You see, another thing Irenaeus understood was that these bodies in this world are in desperate need of redemption. Not escape, but redemption. Because how can our bodies be full of light when they are under attack? How can they be full of light when they've been subjugated, used, and controlled? How can they be full of light when they're constantly at risk of mysterious viruses or senseless violence? How can our bodies be full of light when we've lost our right to make decisions about what's best for them? And if our bodies are in danger, we may not be able to receive the care needed to save our very lives. Our bodies know, and we know because we can feel it. Just how much darkness is pressing in on us, we know, we can feel it. Our bodies are on high alert, and I don't know about y'all, but I'm exhausted. Admittedly, escape feels easier. Numbness feels safer. So how can we be full of light? Well, St. Irenaeus reminded me today that we are in need of redemption, not escape. This world needs to be redeemed, not escaped. For all the jokes that I've heard recently about moving to Canada, getting out of here, (laughs) it feels good, feels right. I've thought about it. (laughs) But we need redemption, not escape. But how? Irenaeus reminds us once again, through the knowledge of Christ. Through the knowledge of Christ whose own body was subjugated, brutalized and robbed of life, whose own body was taken down from the cross and buried, whose body was resurrected and ascended, whose body we remember and share in communion whose body gives us life everlasting. 
That's the very body that we must remember and we must cling to when despair starts to creep in, when we feel the hopelessness and the frustration of the things that are being put upon us, of decisions made on our behalf that we have no control of, this is the body to whom we cling, Christ's body. His physical body that lived and loved and ministered to all of us and also the body of Christ in each other. How we recognize Christ's face in one another, how we encourage one another by seating, sitting next to each other, holding each other's hands, crying with each other through this grief and through this pain. Christ's body. Christ's body. That's how. It's the only thing I can imagine giving me any light with which to feel, to fill this weary body. Our God has promised us redemption, not escape. When my mind gets flooded with all the bad news and I can feel the anxiety creeping in, dimming the light and clouding my body with darkness, I know where to look to find the good news. Christ, our embodied Savior, has come to be with us and has given us the gift of each other. And so we hold on to one another and we cling to Christ. In Christ, God has promised us redemption, not escape. And I have to continue to know and to believe that God will never break a promise. Amen. Our hymn of response is one you know very well, probably by heart. It is 585 in the United Methodist Hymnal in the pew where you're sitting, or just sing it from memory and we'll do all three verses.
Your eye is a lamp lighting your whole body. Live wide-eyed in wonder and belief. Your body fills up with light. Keep your eyes open, your lamp burning, so you don't get musty and murky. Keep your life well lighted by the power of God's grace. Amen. Thank you.